This week I'll show you how to paint some sleek space elf ninja pirates, as I'll show you how to paint the brand new Aldari Corsars. Welcome to the Painting Coach. So I've primed this model with black and then I've added some white overhead and a zenith or highlight. This is to make it easier to paint some of those lighter colours. The first thing I'm going to do is take some bad and black and block back in those black sections of armour as well as the cloak and any other areas such as the hair. When that's done I'll take some staggered on scale green and I'll use this to base all the greeny blue parts of the armour as well. My one is quite thin because I've pre-thinned it for airbrush so you might need two coats to get a nice even coverage. Next up we'll focus on those red elements and I'm going to base all of these using corn red. I'm focusing on things such as the sash around the middle as well as the ribbons coming from the bird and the wrist and that little top knot for the hair. To finalise the base colours before we use the first shade, I'm going to take some lead belcher and use this to paint all the metallic areas. There's not a huge amount, just the sword blade and also some of those clasps around the leather areas. I'm then going to wash the majority of the model using null oil, just leaving those black areas so I don't get any nasty tide marks. Take your time with this, make sure nothing pools, just give everything a slightly darker tint. When that's totally dry, we're going to base all of the leather areas as well as any gold areas. So take some Rhinox hide and use this to paint all the leather and also any of that gold detailing you've got around the armour and of course the gem. The first highlight we'll do on all that leather is going to be with Doom Bowl Brown. Now we want to get a good point on the brush for this and where we can we want to drag it along the shape of the model. We're going to cover the majority of the leather just leaving that Rhinox hide in the deep recesses. We'll do the last highlight on the leather using Scrag Brown. Now take your time with this and use it fairly sparingly. You just want to get some really nice sharp edges as this will help the leather to pop. Next up we'll get the gold done. The colour we need for this is Liberator Gold. Now this is really easy and goes on really nicely over that Rhinox hide. Take your time, use the tip of your brush and drag it along the areas. If you do make any mistakes, especially around that filigree, you can just use the underlying colour to tidy it all up. Things are moving along really nicely now, so let's get the inside of that cloak finished. First off, we're going to take some Zandri dust and use this to paint all of the inside. We're also going to paint any areas which you want to keep bone, such as weapon hilts and weapon hafts. We'll use some Ushabti bone as the first highlight, leaving that Zandri dust in the deep recesses. Where you can, make sure to use the shape of the model to drag a nice sharp highlight. For the sharpest highlight in any bone areas, we're going to use wraith bone. So take your time with this, use the tip of your brush and just get a really nice crisp highlight to really make those bone areas pop. You don't have to worry about using this on the inside of the cloak, especially if it's covered. We'll start to highlight things now. So the first colour we're going to highlight is the red areas. So we'll take some corn red and we just want to put some of that vibrant colour back in, leaving the darker colour in those recesses. Next up, we'll highlight with some wasdaka red making sure we focus on those raised areas and also any sharp edges such as we've got along some of that fabric. Finally we use some squig orange to give a really nice classy desaturated red effect. Again we're focusing just on those most raised areas and those sharpest corners. A nice easy highlight now and we're going to do all the silver. The colour we're going to need is chrome from Valeo Model A. If you don't have that you can use Stormhole Silver and essentially what we're looking to do is just get a nice tip on the brush and pull this along those sharpest of edges. Get a nice smooth action for a nice crisp edge. We'll focus on the brighter white areas next and the colour we're going to need for this is Corax White. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that face mask with Corax White and I'm also going to go over some of those feathers and draw in some of the details such as the spine as well as some of those dashes that come out towards the edge and this will form some great underpainting ready for when we use contrast paint later on. Shade any hard armour areas, such as that face mask, using apothecary white contrast paint. You don't want to put too much in there, but do make sure you cover the whole area so you get some nice gradated colour. To highlight all the white, we're going to use some white scar. Now make sure you've got a really good tip on your brush so that you don't paint the edge highlight too thick. Whilst we've got the white scar out, we're also going to paint and base all of the soul gems. Now you may need more than one coat for this, but just take your time and make sure you get a really nice smooth finish. I'm going to look to finish all the feathers on this Model X and the colour I'm going to use for this is a Kelly and Green contrast paint. Now over that Grizzale base that we've put down this is going to be really nice and really effective. So just take your time not to go over anything we've already finished and just add the Kelly and Green. For the gems I'm going to use a range of contrast paint. The colour I'm going to use is Warp Lightning, Volupus Pink and Talisar Blue and all we're looking to do is cover those areas we previously painted white. We'll move back to the armour next and the colour we're going to use for this is Stegadon Scale Green. 
Where we've got the Stegodon scale green base, we're going to look to paint the majority of the areas so that we block it back in, leaving only dark in the recesses. And then on the black parts of the armor, we're going to look to do some edge highlighting using the tip of the brush. The next highlight on the armor is going to be with some Sotec green. And we're looking to do both parts exactly the same here, where we're looking to do some edge highlighting. So take your time where you can pull the brush along the edge of the model. And where you can't do that, make sure you've got a really good tip and some really good brush control to get a nice highlight. The final highlight on the armor is going to be with Temple Guard Blue, and this is for the greeny blue areas of the armor only. And all we're looking to do is catch those sharpest edges to really make the armor pop. Use the point of your brush and the shape of the model to get some really nice crisp lines. We're nearly at the finish now, so let's bring it home. We're going to highlight some of those black areas that we didn't highlight the same previously, such as the hair, the eye patch, and the cloak. And the color we're going to use for this is Mechanicus Standard Grey. Make sure you've got a good tip on your brush, the paint is moving nicely, and get a nice crisp line. We're making great progress, and we're nearly finished, so let's do the skin. Now, I want this one to be slightly warmer than the box art, so I'm going to start off with Pale Flesh from Vallejo Game Color. After two coats of Pale Flesh, I'm going to take some Reitland Flesh Shade, but I'm only going to use this in the recesses. I'm not going to cover the whole of the flesh. Just take your time and drop it in there. Once that Reitland flesh shade is dry, go back in with pale flesh and just highlight around those areas such as the brow and tidy up any areas where you may have spilt it, such as around the back, focusing towards those borders to make sure you've got a nice separation of colours. The final highlight for the flesh is going to be with some Wraithbone. And again, make sure you've got a really good tip on your brush and just focus on those most raised of areas, such as the brow around the eye, as well as moving back towards the cheekbones if you can see them. I wanted to do something different with the bird to make it a bit brighter than the box art. And because I've got that nice white color on it, I can use contrast paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some warp lightning and I'm gonna use this over the majority of the top of the bird. Before that dries, I'm gonna take some plague bearer flesh and I'm gonna paint the entirety of the rest of the bird. And what will happen is that will blend really nicely on those feathers on the top side, whilst underneath we've got a nice pale green color. Finally, I'll finish off with some Talisar Blue Contrast Paint just on those last two feathers coming out from the tail, and the model is done. And there we have it. This Corsair is done, ready for the tabletop to cause some distress for the denizens and the population of the 41st millennium. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, give it a like, leave a comment, and check out my other content. I'll see you next time.